From the get-go, Brush Burial was an oddball for me to review. This game, available on itch.io for $6 and coming to Steam on December 1st, 2023, had me looking more confused than Activision Blizzard being told that it's not required to put microtransactions in their game. Granted, it's an immersive sim that has you investigate these dark corners and try to... Well, you know what? We'll get to that. But before I begin, this key was obtained from the developer for video and review purposes. That won't change my opinion on the game in the end, but you should know that because of FTC guidelines, as well as the whole morals thing, you know? So Brush Burial describes itself as a low-fidelity first-person shooter inspired by immersive sims of yesteryear. And that's pretty accurate. You play as Fennel, a so-called Swamp Devil. Yeah, that looks like a Swamp Devil, I suppose. Who's wanting to take all the gold for himself. And, and, actually, that's one of the things I need to establish from the get-go. Brush Burial doesn't exactly give you a task to do or even an overall goal. There's no revenge plot to fulfill, no organization to overthrow. Hell, you don't really get a whole lot of characterization from Fennel himself. It's just, here's a world, go at it. Which will be very decisive for many players out there. Those who want structure, this is not your game. But those who like to figure things out, even basic mechanics, you'll definitely have a better time here. Let's start with the basics though. You control Fennel like you would in most FPS games. Look around with the mouse, move with WASD, and you can stab people with your toothpick that he defaultly holds with mouse 1. And you can hold it for a more significant attack. There is no controller support here, so those who need a controller, look away. You do have the ability to slow down time by holding down the shift button when close to an enemy, which feels unnecessary in most cases given the speed of most enemies. But I digress. Take enough hits and you'll die. And the same goes for most enemies. Now, of course, you have more than just your little toothpick. You can pick up more significant weapons for more damage, like maces or a poisoned knife and can even get guns so that you have to load one bullet at a time to fire, which actually makes sense for this world and actually was cool to see other than, you know, an Uzi or something like that. Now, you have 10 slots in your inventory. Two of them are dedicated to tools and, well, weaponry, and other slots for things like food, ammo, and keys. As for movement, however, this is where the game starts to distinguish itself. Fennel has the ability to attach himself to surfaces with his tail that he can grab onto things with a quick mouse and keyboard press. Sometimes you can just grab items, other times it will actually fling you towards the actual surface that you try to grab. Now this gives him some jumping and ability to really move around the environment, and this comes in handy and does feel nice, but it also does cause some frustration. Sometimes it's unclear if a surface can be attached to, and there's some inconsistent logic at times when it comes to grates especially. This surface, scalable, and I can pull myself to it, probably because of the chain-like material. This grate that seems similar, just a little bit bigger, no, it's only for opening and unlocking, which, yeah, there's a weird inconsistency there, but I understand what the developer was trying to go for. The movement being a little strange actually works to the game's advantage because, well, for me it was the most fun part of the experience. When the game gives you an area to explore that has hazards or verticality, figuring out the way to move around and use the environment around you felt nice. I just wish there was more of it in the end, but it's possible I didn't find the right places to explore at times. See, the game doesn't give you a map or even any sort of reference of where you are or where you can go. No map to show you that a door might have been missed, for example. So what I found in my eight plus hours was all right, but honestly, a great amount of that time was backtracking through areas and just trying anything I could think of to find a new place. 
while the low fidelity does work in terms of aesthetic and sort of the atmosphere, sometimes it caused a little bit of a problem when finding like a door that sort of hid itself among the environment, which maybe was purposeful, but it was more frustrating in certain aspects. I say this knowing that combat of brush burial is, well, it's there. It's nothing to write home about. And while it does add at least a little to the experience at first, it got tedious quickly. Sure, I ended up using a lot of my money I would find to buy bullets and load up guns, because it was the easier way to deal with things. And I will give the game credit for having enemies that sometimes had armor that forced me to change how I dealt with them, kneeing them in the back of the shins with a knife, or, you know, having to pull out something else, like using a lighter to light something in the environment and throw it at someone. I didn't do that most of the time because I'd usually set myself on fire, but nevertheless, lighting them up with the lighter themselves would also work. But here's where the game's holes really start to develop. The biggest thing in the game that really irritated me was that when reloading a game from a save or death, everything would respawn. Items, things in the environment, and including enemies. This also included actually quitting the game and starting again as well. So if you just so happen to stop the game to do something and come back, thinking that your saved progress would help you out in this next area, well, no, especially if it's an area you already had to go through. They would just come back and you'd have to kill them again if they got aggressive with you, or just ignore them and run by them. This is where the tedious nature of the game really wore on me, especially in conjunction with no map and trying to figure out where to go next. It's just that I kept on doing the same thing over and over again, and the combat was not deep enough where I felt like the actual encounters were worth my time. But the game also shows its limitation when it comes to the altered solutions that could be present. See, when I saw the tag of immersive sim on the game, I assumed that there would be many a different way of getting solutions, even if there weren't natural quests that it tracked. Like take for example, when I actually talked to this prisoner, as opposed to him getting sort of freaked when I killed one of the enemies in the other room. He seemed to indicate that he will talk to me and work with me if I get him some borscht. Okay, cool, I could definitely do that. Just make my way through here, buy it from this guy because I have way too much money at this point, and here you go. My reward? Nothing. He doesn't do anything, he just basically keeps quiet. He doesn't actually talk to me, in fact. The immense disappointment when this happened really caused me to look at the game in a whole new light after that, because up to this point, I was just killing things left and right and feeling like the game wasn't really helping me in terms of understanding things, but I realized that I don't play a lot of immersive sims, so understanding that, okay, I gotta look at things differently, let me try to talk to people, let me try to be a little bit more stealthy on my approach. It didn't seem to work. And I mean it's hard to understand why you put these clues in the game, like, you know, talking to the person, and not have them do anything. Hell, at least this one had some kind of response to it. There was this dock worker that seemed to have his partner leave him in the middle of, you know, packing this truck. Okay, maybe I can help with putting things in there. There's definitely a good physics system we've been playing with. No, can't move a thing. Must be glued to the floor or something. All right, fine, let's go and get the person. Look around, try to figure out who he is. Ah, oh, oh, he's here. I'm not sure how he got up here, but okay, let's talk to him. Yeah, he's not budging from the spot. Okay, maybe I could push him there? Maybe I could do something? I jumped on his head and he's dead. I'm Mario. Must be brittle bones or something. Now, I want to be clear. This is a genre, in my experience, that is really hard to pull off from a solo dev experience. The idea of an immersive sim, at least in my mind, is the idea of freedom of how you go about things. And sadly, Brush Burial doesn't give me the tools that I would want, and usually takes a lot of resources to pull off in terms of what most people want. 
The fact is, the more pathways that you open up, the more you have to account for. And it just becomes too much. You just don't have all the time in the world. Like, the ability to use a toolbox to open up these grates, good. That's a good system. Simple, easy, and willing to deal with it. The physics in this game, yeah, it's sometimes wonky, but it's good. I'm not questioning the competency of the developer here when it comes to the execution of adding these mechanics. I'm questioning if it was the right game and how many mechanics that he should have added for it because, well, it all doesn't come together in one package. Now, one could argue that finding pathways that don't work is also part of that overall immersive sim experience. And that's what I'm struggling with here. To be honest, there is some truth to that. Attempting to figure out the game's secrets was the best part of me playing the game, even through the frustration. Knowing that there was still more to find based off the trailer pushed me to look for more, even going back four, five, six times, and sometimes I did. But in the end, it was still frustrating. Sometimes the game's lighting could be very deceptive, hiding things that, honestly, I don't think were meant to be hitting, it was just hard to see. Sure, the low res and fidelity could add to the imagination and add nostalgia to the game, even add some horror elements, but there were definitely times where I was cursing under my breath because of, well, I just didn't know what I was looking at. It was actually a death by a thousand paper cuts when it came to my enjoyment of the game in the long haul. Things like when enemies were alerted and how long they stay alerted. Even if I ran across the map and came back, they still were most of the time. Which, okay, you could argue that. You kill someone and lo and behold everyone's on edge. It makes sense. There's a realism to that. But remember that Borscht guy? I tried to do that sequence at first but ran into someone else who attacked me. They shot at me, and I killed them. And the Borscht guy? I could not get the guy to stop running around and trying to give him Borscht until I reset the game. Now, yes, he may be like, oh, you're a killer, but the other guy attacked me. There is some non-realism that you have to take into account to make things a little bit more enjoyable, because all this got me to do was say, fine, exit game, start game over, let me try it again. Which then led to the fact that it didn't work. And I'll fully admit, that started to bleed over into my other criticisms. Things like the music that happens when you are in combat. Yes, it has some energy, some oomph to it. You feel tension, you feel like things are going wrong. But when you hear it for the 10th, 20th, 30th time, and everything around you isn't necessarily working, it starts to grate on you. It starts to make you think, maybe that wasn't as good as I first thought. Maybe it's mid, maybe it's bad. Now, I will say the music and the sound design for the most part didn't seem to be a problem. It seemed to be smart and seemed to be elevate elements of the actual combat at times. But take a listen and you'll hear what I'm talking about when it comes to at least my initial element, AKA things were fine. <laughs>
story-wise, I actually don't know what the story is. Sure, there's some people to talk to. Sure, they may mention the world and everything in it. But I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure if any of it coherently came together. Like, talking to people was rare until you got to the one city area anyway. And by that time, I was wondering where the game was taking me. It seemed like I wanted to kill everyone because the game was, you know, firing upon me on a couple of occasions. But I still don't know what the story was even looking back at the footage. So I think there is one there but you have to dig for it. Now, given the last 10 minutes or so, you may think that this game isn't worth playing and frankly is one of the worst I've played this year. That I wanted to stop almost immediately and it wasn't worth my time. But funnily enough, that's not the case. And while I do think the game has major flaws and has a very specific audience and could have been a lot better, I also think that the Solar developer made some choices that were interesting, trying to distinguish itself, and also really makes me curious about what he does in the future. Like the restrictive inventory at first glance looks annoying. Each key you're carrying being one slot and there being around five keys that could open a possible door, that sounds like a nightmare when it comes to inventory management and just a little bit over the top. But what it did was force me to make decisions about what to carry and what was around me, what to use and what not to use, and what was the most important thing. And that goes a long way. It forced me to use the environment and search for things like food, not just have any on hand if I wanted to be able to open any door at any point. Those are the kind of things that immersive sims do right. Try to make you make decisions and have consequences for the decisions. I liked it when the game gave a little more out there when it came to the level design. Like this weird lava section, forcing me to move in different ways and giving me the space to do it. I liked it when the game got vertical, and I liked the fact that the environments were ranging all over the place from the level design department. There were compartments, there were big areas, there were some, you know, little areas that were hidden away. I just appreciated the fact that not everything was uniform and everything had a purpose, but that purpose wasn't necessarily understandable at first. I could go on, but I am trying to keep these reviews a little bit shorter, at least for me. So the fact of the matter is, Brush Burial will be a very specialized game which will be shown by the enhancers. For majority of the audience, however, the lack of direction, the inconsistencies in the systems, and the overall repetition will start to grade on you. And the game's charm in other areas will work, but it won't be able to overcome those negatives. Sure, it's still worth playing, but in the end, it's a 62 out of 100, making it a deep sale buy, even with the lower price point. But that doesn't take into account my enhancer system, which takes the more subjective element of games and tries to match a game to you. If you fall into one of the following categories strongly on screen, add or subtract that score to the main score. If the first digit of your score changes, refer to this chart to see if the game lies in the viability rating for you. As you can see, these are mostly positive because of the fact that it's so specialized. Certain players are going to like this game, and those players will want to pick it up. The immersive sim genre does have some variety, but this is a little bit different, and I did appreciate it. Anyway, that's it for this review. If you want more, come join the Discord in the description below. I can give you information, I can give you raw footage, I can give you a lot of things there. But most of all, you could ask me questions, or you could leave them in the comments section below. If you want more content like this, hit that subscribe button. And as for what's going to be next, good question. I actually may review Small Saga. I really enjoy that game so far, and while there are some issues, it is worth a critical look. I'm still working on an inescapable, time splitters and a bunch of other you know reviews in the background but i'm also focusing my effort 
on the overall overlooked games of 2023 list. I'm hoping to have that done by the time that the winter sale starts. And this time I want that to be on the day of. So I am putting a lot of effort into it. Anyway, that's it for now. And as always, keep on gaming.